Hello everybody, this is again Erik Brabener from Ares TV and I promise you that I will be back perhaps with the second interview together with Rob Davis and uh, here I am with my second interview with Rob Davis. So Rob, I saw today on the presentation a very interesting slide talking about the common pitfalls when starting with BPM and especially with process modeling. Perhaps can you, can you give us some more details on those common pitfalls please? Yes, of course Eric. One of the things we usually find that people make a mistake with is not understanding why they're doing process modelling before they start. So if you think about any project, it's important to understand what the project's about before you get going. Who are your customers? Why are you doing it? And the, exactly the same is true with process modelling. For instance, do you know if you're doing process modelling because you want to do business process improvement? Or are you doing it because you want to give it to the IT guys so they can develop a system? It's important to know this because it affects the amount of detail that you need to model and how much effort you need to put in. So that's a very common pitfall. Another common pitfall is to only model the success criteria for the product or the project. So for instance, in BT we call this the sunny day scenario. What happens on a really good day? And many people just model this. But of course, for any business, the real challenge is how they handle it when something goes wrong. If something goes wrong, can you still deliver the product to the customer? Can you still deliver it on time? Can you still keep the customer happy? And that's what really differentiates you from your competitors, whether you can keep the customer happy. So it's really important not just to model the success criteria, but to work out what things could go wrong and to model actions to be taken under those conditions. And we often see that when people model decisions. For instance, they might have a process for sales, for high volume products or high value products where we want to credit vet the customer to see if they're a good risk. Quite often you'll see a step in a process which says check customer credit. But then what happens if the customer credit is bad? What do we do then? Quite often people won't model that, they'll just model what happens if the customer's okay. So these are the sort of common things we find. It's also very important to make sure when you're modeling with a tool like Aris to ensure you've got good standards in place. Again, often people are tempted just to start modelling with several different project teams without establishing common standards to make sure the models will look the same and have the same sort of information. A tool like ARIS is very good because the ARIS method imposes a certain amount of rigour on the way you work. So it's important to put standards in place to make sure it's used properly. So these are some of the common things that we've found over the years that people need to think about. Make sure you know why you're modelling, model the bad things as well as the good things and make sure you've got standards in place so people model correctly in the same way. Hey, thank you Rob. This was really very interesting for me, especially the part about Aris was uh, very pleasant for me. So thanks for this interview and perhaps we will see us again next time. See you.